everybody and welcome back to my channel. Why is my arm doing this? But tonight is my favourite type of content. I just get home from work and I'm like, I'm ready to talk about some makeup. So let's do that. Today I want to document my quarter one 2021 favourites. Uh, it's going to be mainly everything except eyeshadow palettes because I'm going to do a separate video for eyeshadow palettes. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Let's start with primer. I need to check if this is available worldwide, but this is the Napoleon Purtis Autopilot Primer. I've tried a lot of primers in my time, and for some reason this one, I got it when I was like 16, because Napoleon Purtis is a quite famous makeup brand here in Australia, and I just always come back to this one. It's so soothing and so hydrating, and honestly, my makeup just goes on it so nice. It's phenomenal. A Becca one was a close runner up, but I'm trying not to talk about makeup that you won't be able to get your hands on. And the Becca one that I'm thinking of is the backlight priming filter and it's kind of sold out. So I've got my eyes on the Auric one. I don't think that offers any actual priming, but it's going to be luminous and I need to try that one. Let's skip on to foundation. I do have three foundations that are my favorite. That's a lot and I'm sorry. But we'll start with uh, Sheer Glow by NARS. It's a classic. I'm in the shade Fiji, can't look past it. Uh, lots of people think this is a medium coverage. I would say it's medium to full. Um, I wear this when my skin's looking pretty good and I don't need to like put a mask over it, but I, I still just genuinely like a fair amount of coverage. So I love her. She's a classic. She covers well and she ages well. She ages well. So at the end of the day, you may have like sweated and everything, but it will actually make this foundation look better. Hence the name Sheer Glow, I think. Next one is, oh, this one always has such a long name. NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Not a fair, far cry from the Sheer Glow, just a lot more full coverage. Like this is the most full coverage foundation I have in my collection. Should I have a breakout or what have you, this is my girl. Um, this shade is actually Punjab, it's way too dark for me. I did have Fiji, but I've, em I've finished it. I'm gonna do an empty soon. I'm so proud that I finished a whole foundation. Um, even though I've gone through many a sheer glows. Worth noting, the Fiji in sheer glow and the Fiji in the all day, this natural radiant longwear are not the exact same. The natural radiant longwear is a lot darker and I accidentally bought Punjab in this, so I'm actually trying to pan this right now. Last foundation are the Hourglass Stick Foundations, Vanish Sticks. I have nude and linen. I put linen in the center of my face and nude in the perimeters. This is when, so I have acne prone skin. This is when I'm really acne and I'll put this on and then put this on top. That is a lot of coverage. That's as much coverage as it ever gets for me, but I love these to be able to go in and top up where I need to. So love those. What would I do next in my routine? I'm actually an eyes first kind of person, so this is all a little askew. Let's go concealer. I have just picked one concealer. So proud of me. I'm going to do a separate video as well, like my favorite natural everyday makeup. Um, but my favorite concealer is the Hourglass. Oh, what is it called? Does it even have the name on it? It's Vanish. So I have the shade Cotton. I also have the shade Oat. Again, I accidentally, sometimes I just rush into Mecca and grab it thinking, yeah, that's my shade. And it's not. Cotton's my shade, but I'm not sad I got Oat because it's a good fake tan shade, actually. Um, this is so full coverage it has a mild set down to it which I love because I feel like concealers with like a mild set down that's what you want because you really want that coverage to like stay there this is so full coverage I personally think this is more full coverage than shape tape but it doesn't crack and age as much as shape tape this has a beautiful finish on it I let it set down and then I put some powder over the top of it and it's just gorgeous I literally can't I went through a whole one of these in about a month, six weeks. I was just obsessed. I could not put it down. I'm also looking here and realizing how much hourglass I'm about to talk about today. Anyway, RCMA uh, foundation palette is how I 
would I contour and bronze at the same time so my actual favorite shades to do that are Shinto 5, 6 and 7 so these three here this is the custom Australian palette I have a video on my channel talking about this so I'll try to link it um, so next time I'll probably just buy one of these shades or all three of these shades in the pots um, but that is how I like to bronze slash contour these don't mess with my what I have put down they don't interfere they provide a beautiful coverage a beautiful finish and they're so easy to blend um, so that is why I love these now I would do my eyeshadow and I'm gonna repeat talking about these in the eyeshadow video but I'm still gonna talk about them now but my favorite eyeshadow base is the P Louise I can't look past it I've tried a lot of eyeshadow bases this really does just smooth out the texture on my lids and I have a lot of it I have really like dry irritated lids this really does smooth it out and cancels out everything underneath it and it's and it really does your eyeshadows go so smoothly over this and I feel like so many brands are trying to replicate it this and they're just really not a hundred percent succeeding to set my eyeshadow base again I can't put my finger on why this powder out of the Mario eye prep and set I have the shade light these two together are a match made in heaven every time I put my eyeshadow on over the top I'm like oh yep 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 this is the combo they were meant to be they're married in my collection but I couldn't tell you what it is specifically about this powder but it seriously does set eyeshadow like nothing else in my collection shall we set the face my favorite way to set my face is with the hourglass veil translucent powder it's just not heavy cakey I'm like squirming around in my seat why and what's my hair doing don't sabo me hair don't sabo me um yeah it just doesn't a lot of powders feel really dry on my skin they feel like they suck the life out of it they feel really heavy this does not mind you I go in with a light hand because I just don't like a lot of powder and it sets it lasts all day without sucking the life out of my skin so that is why I love this if I want more blurring if I want maybe a hair more coverage but probably the reason I use my next thing I'm going to talk about is for a blurring effect that sort of gives the effect of more coverage which is the airbrush flawless finish complexion perfecting micro powder I have the shade one and two depending on what's happening with my complexion color that day but I love her she's so blurring and she replaced my Max Studio Fix, which is saying a lot. That was a diehard relationship for 10 years. And Charlotte came in and was like, guess what? Here I am. And I'm expensive. <laughs> so I've set my face. Now I'm going to set my under eyes. And the first palette or powder that I will go in with is the Kat Von D Shade and Light. Again, rather than buying a palette next time, I'm probably going to just buy these in singles because I actually only really use the top row here. But obviously you can see these two are my favorite shades this one's a bit too dark so again like the palette's a little bit wasted on these you can buy these singularly on the kvd website but these are just great again i know i've tried so many different translucent powders to set my under eyes and i know everyone likes to do translucent powder and bake and i do do that with my laura mercier but really most powders suck the life out of my under eyes even if i do a pat uh under eye patch first this one does not this this formula sets my under eyes brightens my under eyes without turning it into the Sahara Desert so we love that oh the snap on it so good now if I want to add a slight luminosity and brightness to my under eyes it sounds scary but I love it I go in with my MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. These are the two shades I go in with the most, which is Emphasize and Cream. I actually go in with Cream the most, and yes, I've already tried to find it in a single, and I can't. I can only find Emphasize in the single. Emphasize alone is too bright. I really do mix these two together. Um, 
So it looks as though when I run out of this, I'm going to have to buy the palette again, which again is so frustrating because I really don't use these shades. They're going to have to go into like a project pan situation, which is unfortunate. But I love this palette. Oh my gosh, it adds such nice brightness and luminosity to the under eyes. It's phenomenal. Bronzer. So I love my Hourglass Bronzer. This is Radiant Bronze Light. It's, I would say, the warmest shade of them all. Um, again, it has such diffusing properties to the skin and that's why I love it and it's so smooth. I wouldn't, I love the word radiant because luminous to me, I start to think all glitter or what's that? Am I going to look shimmery in places I don't want to look shimmery? Radiant is the correct way to explain this powder. It adds dimension to the face and healthy glow without looking glittery and I just love the diffusing effect it has it's great now it was a brave choice to put this in because I have only had it for about a month but I love my Jaclyn cosmetics bronzer uh, so if we're going to talk about the bronzer first I this is the duo golden goddess and warm flush and I love it again I love it for the same reason I love my hourglass bronzers it has diffusing properties and it has a really warm tone and that is why I love it um, if I had to choose between the two please don't make me that's too hard blush same goes this is uh, become one of my favorite blush formulas the shade warm flush I have a video on them by the way so I can link that as well but again really bright color actually adds a really healthy glow to the face diffuses the pores beautiful love it love it love it love it and no shock the hourglass blushes are also my favorite this one in particular is the shade mood exposure this is like sunburn type shade for me like and that's why i love it i love blush to make me look sunburnt and this is what mood exposure does for me again diffuses my skin adds color, adds healthy glow. Oh, love it. These products, I just, I just love. I love them. I love them. I love them. Highlight. No surprise. My favorite highlight is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Mood Light Powder in the shade Carrots. If I need to brighten it up a little bit more, I will chuck on Do Me because Do Me, Do Me is the one with a more warm tone. Brighten Up has a more pinky tone. Again, I have a video swatching all the lighter shades, light to medium shades of this collection. This is the new packaging and there is no highlight quite like this. I know I keep talking about diffusing the pores. I guess I have an issue with massive pores, but I'm always just trying to look like a porcelain doll pretty much. And this has such good diffusing properties at the same time as highlighting you. It's actual magic in this little tub. Highlighters, Jaclyn Cosmetics. So I have picked out the shade Sparks to show you. Mine obviously hasn't been touched because if you watched my Jaclyn Cosmetics video, I am still getting through my collection limited edition palettes from last year. However, this is uh, a shade that was within those um, palettes. I do love this shade Sparks. However, I do love it mixed with Mesmerize them both because sparks on its own is probably a hair too bright but again i can't i've said this about all the products but this is why i like these products it diffuses it diffuses my skin at the same time as highlighting it how are these different you have to try them to know i'd say this one is more intense and this one is like the primer for this one that is the perfect way to explain it but please do watch my video because i go more in depth about that also in that video, I said I was going to use Awestruck as a blush topper. That's why I bought it in such a dark shade. Because this formula has such blurring properties, they are great blush toppers. Like, you heard it here first. They are great. So I have tried that a few times as a blush topper. And actually, I was a little bit nervous. It did work out. I have it as a blush topper today, and I think it looks awesome. I had to give an honorable mention foot in the blush category to my custom MAC palette. Again, I'll link the video somewhere here where I discuss which shades are which. The formula is not anything 
revolutionary anymore but I just had to give an honorable mention to this because I love how it turned out this is like my little pride and joy this is my little OG if you've loved makeup since you were 15 and you're around 27 like me you will probably feel that nostalgic vibe with MAC and making a custom MAC palette is just the one mascara I will only use tubing mascaras now and I picked up the Hourglass Unlocked mascara a little while ago and this does everything I need it to do lengthens, add vol adds volume and doesn't so tubing mascaras mean they come off in like these fibers rather than like go friggin everywhere um, and this one just does the job I am slightly annoyed the formula has aged all mascaras do and it's just not doing what it did when I first got it I do want to try the Kevin Aquan mascaras because I heard their tubing formulas as well so I'm going to try those but this is my favorite for now because it's great does everything I need it to do but it's also the only I only have one mascara at any given time um, so that is the mascara of this quarter lips I have four favorite lipsticks and they're all nudes um, the first one is Yash and one of them I can't find. One of them is Matt Cunny Love, but I don't have it with me here today. It's got to be, I've racked my whole house. It's got to be in one of my bags somewhere. But this is Yash and that's Yash there. They're all so similar, these shades, but you need them all. Velvet Teddy, classic. Everyone loves Velvet Teddy. More pink. So Yash is more brown and Velvet Teddy is more pink. Um, love them and then the last one is the nudist which is cream de nude and I have many of these cream de nude has more of a the other two are more satin matte and this one is cream in the cream sheen formula so it's a little bit uh, luminous glossy like lip liners I'm not huge on lip liners but I do have more the morphe lip liners I think are really nice so I have morphe sweet tea wow that's an interesting swatch which is really quite brown and then I have love bite which is uh still brown actually but just like a lighter more warm toned brown oh god show the people Asha show the people <laughs> So that, I don't wear lip gloss, so I'm not going to talk about lip gloss because lip gloss gives me PTSD with like hair getting in it and stuff. No, no, no. No. <laughs> so that's it. That is my quarter one favourites. Oh, actually, eyelashes. Manicare Megans. Megans. They are, when I do wear lashes, I don't always wear lashes. Lashes is like me getting full, full glam. Um, like I don't have lashes on today. So that is, yeah, all my favorites for quarter one, 2021. Um, and I am going to post the eyeshadow palette, my favorite eyeshadow palettes for quarter one separately. I'm not sure how many I'm going to pick at this point. It's like five to six, <laughs> but let me have my moment. Anyway, that's it for me today, guys. And I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye. Bye.